This video is about building your first custom GPT and four critical mistakes to avoid. Custom GPT models are incredibly exciting. The ability to easily adjust and share ChatGPT will transform the way you work and give you a huge edge as a marketer or entrepreneur. However, you'll inevitably run into problems when first starting out. And most of the content I've seen just focuses on the hype and not these realities. That's why in this video I share the four biggest mistakes I made when building my first GPTs so you can avoid hours of headache. I'll also provide an example project at the end of this video to help you quickly build something useful as you learn how all of these pieces fit together. I've got a cheat sheet version of this with everything we're going to go through today and a lot of extra stuff specifically around my custom instructions that I use a lot. So check that out in my Patreon. With the right expectations and strategies, you can start creating custom GPTs that provide real value. Let's dive in. All right, so just so we're all on the same page here, getting to these custom GPTs, you want to log in and you want to click this explore button and then at the top of this list you can see create a GPT so that's where we are in the open AI paid version of chat GPT and the first mistake I want to talk about is the GPT builder this was interesting I spent a lot of time with it and it can be a good starting place but it is for sure not the end all be all it basically helps you write the instructions and select the capabilities which we'll get to here in a second but the problem with it is as you go along working with it, it tends to overwrite the instructions. So you may start with the most basic idea of what you want the app to be and it keeps asking you questions from there and you continue to fine tune it with the builder. But then, as I'll show you in a second, you go into the configure tab and the most recent request has overwritten the, the previous requests. So that is a bit difficult and a bit shocking, but something you definitely want to watch out for. So this will make maybe more sense as we go along and you understand the instructions in the configure tab, but basically don't trust this builder too much. It's very simple. It's a good starting place but I'll show you in the example project at the end how best to use this. And also it may lead you astray as far as the potential capabilities that are possible at this point with the GPTs. I had a lot of back and forth with it about programming the GPT to remember and self update and so forth, which frankly I don't believe is possible, although the GPT builder would lead you to believe that it is. So you might wanna take it with a grain of salt. Maybe it's programmed for functionality that's coming out later, but there are some things that it offered that I don't think are possible. Now getting into the instructions. So the instructions are a very helpful part of this, and as you work with the builder, you'll see it populate these instructions, which is very similar to the custom instructions if you're familiar with that from previous versions of um, ChatGPT. And what I found here, the biggest mistake I've made is that it allows for 8,000 characters in there. So I stuffed the heck out of it and used every one of those 8,000 characters, or at least I should say I used five to 6,000 characters, which was just too much. It seemed to not fully be able to access that much. So just because you can stuff that much in there doesn't mean that you should. In fact, my rule of thumb currently is to use just one to 2,000 characters in here. So keep it rather light because you don't want to flood its memory, its RAM, if you will with these custom instructions. So I find it useful for just the basics of how you want the bot to interact. And then the knowledge, which you'll see just under there where you can upload files, that's where you want to put the more extensive information. And next, my mistake number three, these capabilities, these just do not feel, frankly, like they are ready for prime time. Uh, I know there's probably people doing great stuff with them, but for me, I've been very frustrated with the browsing feature. I think Perplexity does a much better job of that. Along with Dolly, I feel like I'm a mid-journey person. Mid-journey just seems to be much better than Dolly. Code Interpreter is the one exception. I think Code Interpreter can write some exceptional code and can be very useful, but as a data analyst, it falls flat on its face pretty embarrassingly. <laughs> I uploaded some very basic financial information and what I got back from it was just so off, I didn't even want to continue any experimentation. So these capabilities, frankly, my big mistake here was thinking that they were ready and I just don't think they are. I think there, there may be use cases for them if you want to get very granular and, and work heavily on trying to make these work. But for me, mid journey is much better for 
for image creation and perplexity is much better for web browsing. Code Interpreter is awesome for creating code. And mistake number four, which is basically the biggest thing here is complexity. I think folks are trying to do too much with these. The examples that I tested, they were created by ChatGPT, examples I've seen from other people, just trying to do too much. So I think really simplifying things is the way to go. And even as you're working through creating your first GPT, it tends to lead you down paths that are way more complex than where this piece of software is at. So watch out for complexity, keep things simple. And that gets me into this starter project. So the goal of this starter project is I want you to learn as much as possible while you're building something valuable. And this is to create your first real assistant. And the step one here, I'm considering this a work assistant. So something for work, although you can do this for fitness, you can do it for many things in your life, your hobbies, etc. But what I would say a great way to start is to describe your assistant in the GPT build so in that first section, and I'll show it to you here. So this is the GPT builder. Start here and just play with it. Give it a couple prompts of what you want it to make. But most importantly, when you put that in, flip over to the configure tab and watch how it populates this instructions. That's very useful because the way that it's wording the instructions and even the character count, there's a lot you can learn there by just watching what it creates. Putting in your first very basic description of how you want your GPT to work and then watching it populate the instructions. And then next, once you've played with that a little bit, try just a couple prompts. Don't go too deeply into that builder because uh, I think you quickly want to move into the configure tab and tweak the instructions based on how you want it to react. So making sure that everything's in there specifically with how it interacts. For this use case, it's a work assistant. So you don't want to put in all of the information about your job and your company into these instructions. Just the basic synopsis of what the this GPT is for and how you want it to interact. And you want to use the best practices of custom instructions if you're familiar with those. That's basically what you're recreating here. I've got some examples of how I like to interact with it. I really encourage it to be radically transparent with me. I don't like how these bots are always telling me I'm doing a great job and everything I put in there is amazing. Uh, I think that's actually doing me a disservice. I really want the truth. If it is good, tell me. If it's bad, I want the critical feedback as well. I also don't like always the very long list. It seems to default into a list of 10 different things very frequently. So I ask it to just describe larger categories. So the three or four categories of things, if it's creating a list and then some subcategories underneath those or some descriptions underneath those has been very helpful for me rather than these long lists. And if it's asking me a question, I like to just focus on one or two questions at a time time, not like 10 or 20 questions. So those are some of the ways that I like to interact with that and have that all in the cheat sheet. Those custom instructions are especially helpful as you're conversing with it in the app, which I'm doing more and more of. And I find when it just lists off like a list of 10 or 20 questions. I just can't keep all of that in my head. So asking it to just write one or two questions and to break those long lists down into categories can be very helpful when you're having a conversation with it in the app, which is what I'm doing quite a bit of lately. All right. So step three is to upload a document detailing the company you work for, your role and other pertinent information. This is where you want to put a lot of that information that you might be tempted to put in the instructions as I did. I think it is better. And some of my colleagues I've been working with have had a better experience putting that all of that information into the um, knowledge section. So a, an easy way to do this to, to build this document, as I was mentioning, is just converse with the GPT app to build this doc quickly and painlessly. So opening that app on your phone, getting it so you can speak to it. There's a little headphones icon you can click on and just saying, hey, ask me a few questions about my company and my job. And with a few back and forth, maybe 10, 15 minutes, you can pull together a a pretty robust documentation of your work life that you can then upload into this knowledge section. And here's where you would upload those files. We're in the config tab here in knowledge, upload that file. Step four is turning off all these capabilities. I know a lot of people are excited about multimodal, but this is where things start to get overly complex. And frankly, things 
don't work very well. For your first bot, I would recommend trying to just make this helpful assistant. And then if you have an idea for a image creation bot or something that browses the web, I would create a bot specifically for that simple use case. And don't try to do too much with these just yet, or especially for your first round, because your likelihood of success is fairly low, I would say. So again, here's where those capabilities are, and I would just turn all those off for your first attempt. So step five here is just testing and refining, using that assistant, trying to build something that can actually help you in your day to day. And then, you know, from there, think of other small aspects of your work or maybe your hobby, maybe your home life, but think of simple assistants that might be helpful. This might be in research or brainstorming. This might be with decision making or acquiring new skills. Those are some areas you might want to look into and think about building these smaller, very simple assistants that can help with very simple aspects of your day-to-day -day, rather than some giant thing that's going to do a bunch of different things. <laughs> For your first one, keep it simple. Try to get something useful as quickly as possible. Try to learn how these different pieces fit together. And I just want to leave you with some of the best practices. Thinking of these as shared custom instructions I think has been very helpful. So if you have some familiarity with creating custom instructions, that can be very helpful. And I would encourage you to check out my other video, which is the team of custom chat bots. I'll link to that in the end of this video. That is has been my best attempt at custom instructions. Very helpful stuff there where you're harnessing multiple personalities inside of one GPT or inside of one set of custom instructions that can all brainstorm together on helping you solve a specific problem, whether that's planning a vacation or writing website copy. Those are the two examples I have in that video. All right. Thanks a ton for watching. Please consider joining my Patreon. As I've mentioned, I have a cheat sheet version with all of this in there, including some extra examples of my custom instructions. And that really helps me support my mission here, empowering marketers and entrepreneurs worldwide by providing comprehensive and practical AI skills that drive profitability and business success. So there are now dozens and dozens of cheat sheets in there. All of those are immediately available to you once you support the channel. There's some coaching options. I've been having a ton of fun helping different marketers implement this with their teams and uh, hopefully find some fun stuff in there. Please feel free to like, to comment, to subscribe, obviously. And again, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Just do it. Make your dreams come true.